difference. And what not enough people know is that there actually are strategies that fit right in the middle. Imagine being able to drop your money into a bucket where you couldn't lose money if the market goes down, but you can make money if the market goes up. It's what we feel is maybe one of the best ways to help our clients win tic tac dough. Now there's different strategies uh, and ways to be able to accomplish that. Some of the most popular options that our clients utilize to be able to accomplish what I just talked about are things called indexed accounts. So you've probably heard of indexing or index funds, index accounts. What you may not have known is there's actually different variations. So what we're gonna talk about is a very specific type of indexed account that's become really popular with our clients uh, over the last you know, few decades, okay? So let's look at our example. Again, you have $100,000 and we're gonna look at the difference between putting money in an indexed account, right? Dropping it into that bucket versus putting money into the market, all right? Now, if you take $100,000 and you put it in the stock market and the market goes down, let's say 20%, right? Well, unfortunately, that means you're gonna lose 20% of your value. Your $100,000 is now worth what? That's right, it's worth $80,000. Now, when index accounts were created, there's a lot of multi-billion dollar private financial institutions that facilitated these accounts and they created them to allow people to effectively create an account or roll money over from existing things like IRAs or 401ks, but they get to hold, put their money into a holding account like a bucket, and they're given a guarantee that if the market ever goes down, your worst case scenario is zero. Effectively, you have a floor underneath your feet that prevents you from ever losing money. So what that means is in the first year here where people would lose 20% in the market, if you had that same money in an index account, instead of losing 20%, you would get a zero. Now, I've had plenty of people that ask me, Jack, you just said there's all these people that have money sitting in accounts earning less than 1% and that's a bad idea. So why are you recommending something that gives me zero? Well, if you do research and you look at the history of our stock market, it usually goes up more than it goes down. In any 10 year period of time, the market usually goes up seven years and down three years. So that means three years out of every 10, zero is your hero. Doesn't that make sense? Right, imagine if we could go back to 2008 Right? That's when my mom lost 75% of her entire life savings and ended up losing it all. Right? Do you think that year we could have given her the option of taking zero? You think she would have taken that deal? Yeah, she would have as well as every single American right, that lost a lot of money during that time or also any time when the market drops. Now, let's just say the stock market goes up, right? Just like the market can't go up forever, it also can't go down forever. You're number 10, the market rebounds and it bounces back up 10%. One of the other reasons why index accounts have become so popular is they come with a guarantee that you can't lose money, right? But they also look at a, each year on its own. They only look at 12 month periods of time. So during that 12 month period of time, the market went up 10%, so our client gets credited 10%. What's important to understand there is they didn't have to make up for the losses of the past. Uh, there's a principle called making up for loss, which makes it very difficult as an, an investor using risky strategies. Because if you lose, think about this, if you lose 50% of your investment, of your money, you actually have to gain 100% to get back to where you started. And that is very difficult. And that's why so many people have more experience losing long-term than maybe winning. Now, with index accounts, you're obviously guaranteed you can't lose money that you add. You get that annual credit strategy, so you don't have to worry about making up for loss. But what if once the market goes up, it goes back down? If year number three, the market goes back down 10%, with index accounts, every time you get credited uh, interest, like in year number two, you made 10%, that becomes your new floor. So it effectively like locks in. And if the market goes down, you don't go down, you just go sideways. You see how the stock market kind of looks like that roller coaster we were talking about earlier? Index accounts have become very popular with our clients because it can only go in two directions, up, and sideways, up and sideways. Now, if you're wondering if there has to be some kind of a catch, you're absolutely right, right? Because if there was something that offered you no downside, you could never lose money, and you got all the unlimited potential of the market, that really would be too good to be true. So let's just say year number four, the market rebounds and goes up 15%, okay? With an indexed account, they put a floor underneath your feet, right? These billion dollar companies that created this allow you to have that guarantee you can't lose money. But if you think about that, to have a floor underneath your feet, what might you also have above your head? 
a ceiling, that's right, or a cap. So let's just say that if the market goes up, the cap in this example is 10%. What that means is that if the market was to go up 15% in year number four, our client would not get 15%, they would get 10. So our clients are giving up some of the upside potential to have that guarantee that they never lose money when the market goes down. Now, if you actually look at this example, what happened over that four year period of time, it would have been the difference of about $30,000. That's a pretty big difference over a short period of time, right? But that's also a hypothetical. We wanted you to understand this principle, right? Of what an index account is versus the stock market. Um, and instead of looking at a hypothetical example that could make one thing look better than the other thing, what we're gonna do now is think about the fact that obviously we're gonna have to make a decision that's gonna affect us for the next 20 years of our life. So what if we looked at the last 20 years of our life? Well, that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna compare the returns of an indexed account versus the stock market. What you see over here is a blue line representing the S&P 500. That's basically the best case scenario that you could have invested in over the last 20 years. If you put $100,000 into the stock market in January of 2000 and rode the roller coaster and didn't get off, as of uh, the end of 2020, you'd be sitting at $256,000. That's starting January 1st, 2000 to the end of 2020, 256. Now, for those of you that we talked about earlier that have been saving and investing, you may not feel like you've actually gained that much money if you've been investing over that period of time. Well, there's a couple of things that we're not accounting for here. We're not taking out any fees, right? Normally, people pay fees of around one, two, three, four, five percent uh, for somebody to manage their money, so to speak, right? So there's no fees being withheld out of that. And that's one of the reasons why people like index accounts is that there is no management. There's no fees that they have to pay. We're also not talking about emotion because emotionally, when people saw their money drop in 2008, what they typically did was pulled their money out of the market and they missed out on a lot of the upside, right? So that's another reason why index accounts have become so popular. It's more of a set it and forget it type strategy. As you can see in the early 2000s, this is when we had the 9-11 crash, the dot-com bubble burst. This is when people were losing quite a bit of money um, as a reaction, it was kind of a correction due to a lot of inflation during the 80s and 90s. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, well, the market corrected for the next three years. So our clients weren't super excited to get zero for three years, but again, at least they weren't losing money. Then they were excited to see that their account started going up. And by 2007, they were at a new all-time high. And of course, their friends were bragging that they were making like 20% in their mutual funds. But then look at 2008. And when everyone else saw their 401k become a 201k, our clients were not freaking out. They weren't stressed. They weren't losing sleep because they knew they were just sitting on the sidelines waiting to get back into the game. And while a lot of people made emotional decisions at this point and pulled their money out of the market, most of our clients didn't and realized all of these awesome gains that we've had over the last 12, 13, 14 years. And so over that period of time, our client ended up with $330,000. Now, we stopped this by 2021 in this example, right? And as you know, in our current environment today, we have quite a bit of economic uncertainty. Uh, and we're starting to see what we've seen before, right? What goes up must go down. Let's just say it gets worse. If the market goes down 50%, this person with their money in the market is gonna be all the way back down to 128,000, almost back where they started 20 years ago, right? But what about the person with their money in the indexed account? Their worst case scenario is zero. See, you don't have to put all your money in this strategy, just the money that you can't afford to lose. At Five Rings Financial, we're not anti-stock market, but we are very pro-diversification. And what you have to do is identify how much money you have in your life that you're really gonna need to become financially independent and that you can't afford to gamble with. Because it's really important to understand while you're growing, but ultimately you have to figure out how you're gonna handle your money when you start to take money out.